the next version of the AMD IO MMU, which is um, yeah, version 2. And I will give you an overview of the features of IO MMU v2 and an introduction how we plan to make KVM um, make use of it. So first the new features, an overview. Um, the biggest change is that our next version, IOMMU, supports two-level page tables. So this is similar to uh, what we already know as nested paging on the CPU side. It's quite a bit different um, on the IOMMU side because the level one page tables are different from the CPU. The level one page tables have the same format as we know it today from the IOMMU, which is um, which has up to six levels. And the second level page tables are forced to um, forced to AMD64 long mode format. This is another difference to nested paging, um, where you can have all x86 page table formats. In the IOMU, only the, the, the long mode page table format is supported as the second level um, page table format. And the most interesting thing about um, these page tables is that you can have multiple second level page tables per device. Want this later. Um, another new feature is demand paging support for devices, which need to support the sets themselves. So you devices can issue uh, peripheral page faults, PPFs, which are already specified in the in the ATS specification. And yeah. How this works uh, will be explained later. And last but not least, the IOMMU has support for performance counters. So first to the two, to the two level page tables. As I, as I already said, the uh, format of the second level page tables is AMD64 long mode format. And which is important, this also includes the access and the, and the dirty bits. The IOMMU, the IOMMU can atomically um, update access and dirty bits in these page tables. This allows sharing these processes with uh, uh, these page tables with processes and allows zero copy DMA from user space directly to the to the devices. Further, a, a, a device can decide or hardware designers can, for a device can decide to support multiple contexts. Each context um, has one, or is associated with, with one second level page table, and the, and the device can signal which context it, it, wants, it wants to access when it um, sends DMA requests. Therefore, a unique identifier was introduced, which is called PES ID. Uh, this stands for peripheral address space identifier. And you may ask what the benefit over SRIOB is. Um, the benefit is that here we support up to um, two power of 20 um, PES IDs per device at maximum. A device may choose to, to support fewer. Yeah. So this requires um, a lot of new data structures, obviously. So at first we have, at first we have the old um, level one page table, which is present in IOMMU v1 already. Um, for the v2 support, we we first need a table um, which translates the pass ID, which is the the address space identifier, to the uh, page table root. This is the the guest CO3 table. Um, this guest this guest CO3 table is referenced from the device table entry. And when we have the, the guest CO3 um, root pointer, we can walk the, the page table, the L2 page table, which is in long mode format. Everything that is that is orange in this um, on this slide is already guest physical which makes um, virtualization of these features easier. Um, demand paging support. Devices that supporters can signal a page fault condition. 
which is quite different from uh, today where a page fault from a device is a situation we cannot recover from because there's no way we can tell the device that it should retry the DMA uh, request with IOM UV2 and devices that support, us, support that um, devices can recover from such a, from such a situation. These um, peripheral page fault feature, how it is, how it is called, um, depends on ATS. So it cannot work with devices that don't support ATS. Um, and it's um, the task of the IOMMU driver to handle the, to handle the page faults. How does it work on um, low level? At first, a device, no, at first a device sends an ATS request. The IOMMU walks all page tables and uh, finds that this address is not mapped, and it sends back an ATS failure to the device. The device supporting peripheral page faults um, now sends a page fault request to the IOMMU. The IOMU um, passes it through more or less to um, to the to software to CPU. It's, this raises an, an interrupt, and then log entry is is written. Um, software then handles this page fault, and when it's done doing this, um, it sends a completion message to the IOMU, which is forwarded to the device. A page fault may not succeed. A, a page fault may, may may also fail. This can also be signaled to the to the device, and then the device just retries this re this request, and gets a success back in the in the ideal case. And then the device has its own TLB entry and yeah, because it's ATS for that address. So the summary of the new features, um, yeah, I.O. page faults with uh, these new devices are no longer fatal errors when the device supports ATS and PPR. With pass ID, um, a device can even support multiple contexts, which can be bound to um, host processes. Um, devices that don't have those features are handled like today. And the new data structures introduced for these new features are designed in a way that they are easy to virtualize. So how will KVM make use of that? Uh, this is a two-part question. Oh, no, it, it's a two-part answer. Um, so in the, in, the, in the first step, we can remove the need for pinning the guest memory when we assign devices that support peripheral page faults. Because if a, if, if a page is, is not mapped in, in, the, in the guest page table or in the, in the nested page table, then the device will, will signal the page fault request and uh, the host kernel can just map this page in. This slows down DMA a bit, but allows overcommit with, de with device assignment. This is, um, yeah, the easy part of, of things to do. The what, now that you brought the page in and pinned it, how do you get it unpinned? You don't need pinning anymore with, when, the, when the device supports peripheral page faults. You do. You do? Because the device now is cached. Once, it, once it's in the device's IOTLB, you have to pin that page because it's not going to issue another ATS no, with MMU notifiers, you, with MMU notifiers, you can you can uh, just send an in, in validate, and you have to in this case. The more complicated part is to actually assign devices which support um, peripheral page faults and the pass ID thing, um, because this. This pass ID thing um, depends on an IOMMU, to, especially on an IOMMU v2 to be present inside the guest. So when we want to assign such a device to a guest, we need to emulate an IOMMU v2 inside, inside KVM. Which is, um, yeah, the more difficult part. 
we need to shadow some 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 data structures like the like the logs, the command buffers, um, L1 page tables, if they are used. Fortunately, you can you can only use the the L2 page tables and omit the L, and, and omit the L1 page tables. So the guest is not forced to use L1 page tables, which are hard to virtualize. So, and to support the IOMMU emulation in KVM, um, we need to extend the device assignment code, which is, um, like we talked in the, both yesterday, um, BFIO. At least this is the future of device assignment. Um, the VFIO interface needs to be extended to support this, the, the, the multiple context per, per device. Because, because as you have seen, um, a part of the guest CL3 table must, must also be um, shadowed. And this requires um, support, in, support in VFIO. The exact design is not um, clear yet how this will be done. And yeah, it's a long way to go for that. First step is probably to get the current patch set upstream into, Q, into QEMU, which emulates the IOMMU v1, and then extends that to a, um, first, first, ex first extends that to assigned devices, and then to IOMMU v2. Then some legal disclaimer, which I had to put in. And now I'm um, open for questions. Yes. 